Success is not built on success. It's built on failure. It's built on frustration. Sometimes it's built on catastrophe. Nayat Singh Sadhu. And what Nayat tells us is something that rings true that you need to realize. Don't get upset with yourself when things don't work out. It's going to take a while. And those mistakes, if you record them by using your daily market worksheet, weekly market worksheet, and trade worksheets, will be your key to success in the future because they'll help you know what not to do. Now let's jump into these charts. Big down day for stocks, but gold continues to move up so nicely. But let's see what we see on the charts. We see for the week still a nice green up candle price movement well above the weekly trend line. We look at the weekly price percent oscillator. It's lost a little bit. It's kinked over just ever so slightly. And we see on the derivative oscillator it losing a little bit of energy. Now again, we're three days, four days through. So we've still got one more day until that candle is fully formed. We go to the two day. And again, this is the first day of the latest two-day candle. We have a red open box spinning top, which means indecision, still an open box candle. So it's not a solid red down candle, but it does mean a significant slowdown, particularly after eight days of strong up movement. Yes, big pullback. We see the price percent oscillator kinking over, going down. Hasn't crossed yet. First day of the latest two-day candle. Now again, if you've reached your price points and all, but check it out. We still are right there on the two-day trend line and well above the weekly. So again, caution. Pay attention to what goes on in the morning. If you want to take your profits after that nice two-day recross, you can do that. But that candle does not close until the end of the day. So see what things look like. The S&P 500 down 1.19% for the day. I'm having a hard time seeing that. Yes, 1.19%. So do pay attention. Let's look at that four-hour chart. You see where all the hammer down started in the afternoon. Some indecision in the morning, but the reel and dropped much, much lower. It pushed through the four-hour or the half-day trend line. Uh, that's where it closed down through. It touched through the two-day, but closed above. So again, watch, learn, pay attention, practice trade this, and let's see what is happening and what it tells us. Now, we're going to keep pushing through these charts. Let's see, going to go back to the weekly, and we're going to go through the S&P, I'm sorry, from the S&P to the NASDAQ 100, now we look at the weekly chart on the NASDAQ 100. It was already weakening. It's gotten weaker on the price percent oscillator. Derivative oscillator lost a good bit of steam. And look at what the weekly candle has turned into. A long wick on the top. That means it's lost a lot of, uh, a lot of energy. And we see it's gone to a red open box candle price right there at the weekly and the two-day trend line. So significant weakness. Now, we had talked about how close we were to a crossover going down. Well, guess what? That appears to be happening. The candle's not closed yet. So again, we'll see what things look like as the day moves on. But we've seen, again, it was flirting with that for a while. Well, now it looks like it's doing that. Price percent oscillator crossing over, derivative oscillator losing lots of momentum. Price is right there at the, well, it's pushed through the two-day trend line, touched down to the weekly, closed above it. So <clears throat> this is just the first day of the latest two-day candle, <clears throat> so pay close attention to it. We can see down movement in the morning further, hammering down movement in the afternoon, and of course, price closing below the weekly trend line on the four-hour chart, which had been laminated and then pulled through the price percent oscillator and the derivative oscillator went negative in the afternoon. So again, when you jump in, just like the training we gave you yesterday, you have your profit and your loss bands and you let them guide you. If you are still there waiting to see how things are going to go, you can do that for the close of the candle, but those profit and loss bands are what helps you get in tells you how long to stay in, 
and then, of course, when to get out. Now, we sure don't want to come anywhere close to losing what we gained with our jumping in point. But again, we, we've been talking about the weakening that we've seen occurring on the cues. So pay close attention as we jump into those moves tomorrow. Now we go to TLT, 20-year bonds, up again for the day, 1.17%. We see bonds and gold up, which is what we ought to see when stocks are down. And we have a decent week that's shaping up. Doesn't look like we're going to have a crossover on TLT by the end of the week, but we are going into, looks like we're going to complete, uh, I guess, week number six of up movement, but still not enough to pull the price percent oscillator over. Derivative oscillator still negative. Two-day chart continuing to ramp up. This is a nice big candle that's forming so far. And, of course, we had the crossover on the four-hour, the half-day chart in the morning, further up in the afternoon. Remember, we're waiting for bonds to sort out. We're going to have to have either the two-day recross going down or what might be happening is the weekly crossover going up for a weekly vertical crossover. We'll see if and when that happens. We'll let you know. Let's go to gold, up 0.88%. Nice to see how we continue to see after this hockey stick kink going up on the price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator gaining upward momentum. Look at that nice candle going up. It's good to see. Two-day chart, again, also going up. First day of the latest two-day candle peaking up above the derivative or the, the Bollinger Bands. That's nice to see in the half-day chart. Again, not reaching the high in the afternoon. It reached in the morning, but again, price out of the Bollinger Bands since it really started cranking over going up back on this Tuesday. So that's good to see on gold. That two-day recross doing quite well for us. Folks, that's where we are as we finish our first four big charts. If you want to accelerate your training and don't have our book, you need it. Charting your way to wealth. You need it. Follow the link in the show notes. If you live overseas, email us cw at chartingwealth.com. For our overseas listeners, we'll send you a PayPal invoice. Pay that. We'll send your book to you wherever you are in the world. Postage paid, autographed copy, waiting for you. So again, friends, thanks so much. Do appreciate all of our Patreon supporters. Don't forget Patreon members. Go ahead and mark your calendar. Wednesday, August 5th, 1230 Eastern Daylight Time here in the United States. We will be talking to you from all over the world and all over the states. We love having you. If you have certain ETFs or stocks you're interested in, why don't you go ahead and email those to us. We'll cover a few of those as we do each show. Just talk about them, help you chart them so you can practice trade them. Also, any questions our Patreon members have in that special live training, we try to get to those too. Lowest level of Patreon membership is $30. That's a dollar a day, $30 a month. So appreciate those people who show us their appreciation for the free service we provide and help underwrite things for the show. Thank you so much. Let's move on to Bitcoin. What's Bitcoin doing up 1.78%? It is our biggest gainer for the day. It just won't cross over going down on that weekly chart, will it? We have a green open box candle, a little one, but still green open box, little wick on the bottom, longer wick on the top. That's what we see for the week today. Hey, maybe Bitcoin's going to cross over going up. Derivative oscillator's already gone positive. If the two-day does cross, if it's a big day for Bitcoin on Friday, which I sort of doubt, but it could be, keep an eye on it if you want to go long on Bitcoin. If there is a two-day recross, it's not our most favorite method of getting in. The weekly vertical crossover is the weekly still positive, barely, and the two-day, if it recrosses, might give you a chance to jump into an up practice trade on Bitcoin. If you want to learn Bitcoin my friends, you got to practice trade it. Okay, what do we see on the uh, half-day chart? Saw a big booming day on Tuesday, sort of a, a, a digestion day on Wednesday, and then popping up on Thursday. So we'll keep our eye on things. Let's go to real estate. Down day for real estate, about half a percent. We can see on that weekly chart where it's just been moving sideways for weeks and weeks. Price percent oscillator is still positive. So is the derivative oscillator. We go to the 
the two day chart, we see that it's trying to, it's pretty flat. Uh, again, derivative oscillator losing some downward momentum, but we'll see. Maybe there'll be a two day recross going up or we might see the weekly rotate over going down. We're just going to wait for that to shake out. Saw a lot of up move, well, some up movement in the morning and then a whole lot of down movement. Didn't uh, close anywhere near as down as it, as it pegged, but a lot going on in the afternoon. That's where we are on real estate. Go back to our weekly chart. Remember, always start with your large chart. And we will go to oil. Oil had a down day. I believe that's 1.14%. Now, we've had a mostly up week so far, as you can tell by the candle. Price percent oscillator still heading up. Derivative oscillator now losing momentum. What does that mean? That's our leading indicator. It means that the up movement is slowing price over price. That's what that shows us. It's our leading indicator. It's a triple smooth version of the relative strength index. We talk about it in the book and explain it very well there. So I encourage you, again, if you don't have a book, get a copy. And then we see on the two-day chart, again, this latest two-day candle, first day, bit of a pullback. Now, we've seen that. We've seen oil go up and then slide sideways, up and then slide sideways, up and then slide sideways. Price percent oscillator still positive on the first day of this latest two-day candle. Derivative oscillator losing momentum. Now we've seen it do that, so we'll continue to watch, see what there is to see there. And you can see where, again, lots going on in the afternoon, pushing down. Price percent oscillator hasn't crossed over yet, but close to it on the half-day chart. And we see where the derivative oscillator lost momentum in the afternoon. So again, been a decent week so far on oil. We'll see how that continues to go on Friday. Hope those of you interested in oil got into that practice trade back when it started around the $28, $29 mark, I guess $28.31, and the high so far this week, $29.28. And again, you can really see how oil crashed from its high of $104.40 down to a low $16.88. Boom. Okay. That's where we are, folks. As we end the day, thank you so much for being with us. Don't forget tomorrow, we record for you at the close of the market, the weekly. It is our comprehensive review and forecast. We'll be back. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.